Hi, I'm K.M. Wyland. I run the writing website Helping Writers Become Authors, and I write books such as Creating Character Arcs and Structure Your Novel. And welcome to this week's writing Q&A. This week's question is from Lev Valeen. Guilty question. How would you feel if you created lovingly crafted dialogue and actions, and yet it turned out many readers just ignored and skipped over both or either, yet still love your story? This happened to me from a reader's perspective with a couple books that I read. I quickly skipped the carefully crafted fight scenes of one that could last for many pages. I just dipped in here and there to see how it went. And the dialogues about spatial directions in the space fights and another just passed me by, even if it was something his characters understood readily. And yet, I still love both those series to death. So how would I feel as an author if a reader skipped my lovingly crafted um, descriptions or whatever. Um, I think, you know, honesty, first of all, I'd feel sort of like, ah, oh, because obviously I put it in there and I loved it and I wanted it to be um, enjoyed and experienced and thought to be absolutely brilliant. Um, but on the other hand, I totally recognize, and I think all authors need to, that uh, art and the experience of art is very subjective. And what we love and what we would love to read in a book is not necessarily something that's going to be everybody's cup of tea. It also depends on the mood that the reader's in. I notice for myself as a reader that what I skip on one day is not necessarily what I would skip on another day. It just sort of depends on, on how much time I have, what I'm in the mood for, that kind of thing. So I think as an author, just recognizing that every reader's experience of what you're putting out there is subjective to them. It's not necessarily a reflection of you or your writing or, you know, because here's, here's the really important thing to understand about being a writer, being a published writer and putting your works out there, is that, you know, for months, years even maybe, the, the, the story is a relationship that's just you and the story. You know, maybe a few beta readers and an editor here or there, but it's yours. And then when you send it out there, it's not yours anymore. And the, the relationships that are created between readers and the story are theirs. It's their own thing. It becomes an entity of its own as they, I mean, they're definitely not imagining what you were seeing. You know, no matter how well you described it, what they see in their mind is totally a subjective creation of their own imagination. So just surrendering that their experience of your story it is going to be different than what you intended. And I think, again, it's, you don't want readers to be skipping, you know, as Elmer Leonard famously said, leave out the parts that readers skip. But again, that's subjective. And I think probably the best litmus test that a writer can uh, use to measure what readers might skip is what they would skip. Because ultimately you're writing a story that you would want to read. You're, you're first and foremost telling yourself a story. And it can be easy to like get self-indulgent and get carried away with your own prose and, and be writing something that you're enjoying writing, but it's not necessarily something you would enjoy reading. So being able at some point to kind of flip that perspective and move into your perspective as a reader and be able to look at this objectively and say, you know, would I be excited and interested by this really intricate fight scene or by all of these naval details that I've put in from my research or would I be bored? Now, some readers love that stuff. I mean, I, I really, really love the Aubrey Maturin uh, naval series by Patrick O'Brien. It is full of like naval terminology, half of which I don't understand. But the half I do, it's like really affirming. It's like fun to read it and be like, yeah, I know what he's talking about. So, and the other half, it's fun because you get to learn it. So, you know, some readers, depending on, on what they're looking for, they want that stuff. And I, but I think the only way to portray it um, authentically within your own story is if you yourself enjoy reading it. Because if you do, then you know exactly the kind of experience that you're trying to create for readers. And then once you do write it, you know, to the best of your ability, just letting it go and realizing that some people are going to skip. Uh, and, you know, in best case scenario, they skip it and they still like the story. Like they skip the stuff they don't like and their experience of your book is fantastic. You know, it's much better than having somebody slog through the whole thing through a bunch of scenes that they're not interested in and get to the end and say, wow, that book was really boring. So if they're self-editing <laughs> what they don't want to read, that's best case scenario and that's fantastic. So really at the end of the day, it just comes down to being really aware as you're writing. First and foremost, acknowledging, am I bored as I'm writing this? Because that's like the first um, test. 
and readers can generally tell if you're like totally just phoning this in and are not interested in it. And by the same token, are you phoning it in in the sense that you think they'll be interested in it, but you really are not. And you're, you know, maybe trying to dredge up the enthusiasm as you're writing it. And from there too, just, you know, studying what works in stories, what you tend to skip, why you tend to skip it. I think that's really important in just analyzing your own experience to stories as a reader, not just noticing what doesn't work, but really thinking about why is this not working so that hopefully you can correct and avoid that in your own stories. So uh, that's just my opinion. I hope that's interesting or helpful. Um, if you enjoyed the video, then please interact with it in some way, like it or leave a comment, ask your question if you'd like me to answer something in next week's video. And I will see you next week.